Hey! All right, another episode starting now. Okay, everyone. I am Angela. I'm Marcy. Hey, and welcome again to our virtual cigar lounge. You're watching on YouTube under Authentically Angela. Thanks so much for subscribing. I've got my wonderful co-host here. Okay, today is what's today? It's Metallica Day! Oh, another, we need another! <laughs> it is Metallica Day. Okay, for so many reasons. Because we, the, right? For so many reasons. Mm -hmm. Not just the music, but we have many things today. So we are going to cut and light into, this is a three-part collab. Collab? Collab? I never say anything with the right <laughs> intonation. <laughs> My kids make fun collab. of me all Probably collab, like collaboration. collaboration. There you go. It's all right. Collab. Collab. Okay, so Marcy, we are smoking the blackened uh, M81 Maduro put out by Drew Estate, but it is collaborated with... Metallica. Yes, James Hetfield worked with, and then we're going to, uh, I will put some of the uh, information uh, below because blackened whiskey company also uh it's all that's why this is called the blackened cigar because we've got the blackened whiskey company mm -hmm. drew estate and james hetfield from metallica all have their hands in this so we're gonna yeah. cut and light um and i do want to say this is called uh the m81 because metallica was started in 1981 so what are we what are you uh cutting with i'm gonna use my trusty i like my uh V cut. I like my guillotine. You like your yep. guillotine. Gu guillotine. Yep, guillotine. Yep. All right. So what I like to match up the label here and get the V right in the center. Gotta, um, oh. They do not make this um. What has this band easy to? Oh yeah, we got to take off. This is cool. That's the foot band. The foot band. Let's take it, it here. Is. Watch this. Just sneak it off like I that. Tried. Just twist it. Pop. Ooh. And ooh, look how beautiful. I'm I gonna know. put I'm this. gonna crack my cigar. In the uh, cigar journal. We're gonna put that in the cigar journal. So, before I light this, actually, I always talk about my LaCroix. It's just a thing I do. So, again, I have my lime LaCroix. We're going to... You did it. Crack it open because I like to have that uh, palate cleanser in between my cigar puffs. That is just me. But I like to share that because I know someone out there might agree. In front of or find use in it to kind of clear the palate in between puffs Ooh. because that was a lovely cut. Let's get this lit. Let's see if your lighter will work for oh, you. Oh, this today. is not gonna light. <laughs> it's not. It's not gonna light. It's, you have it's to actually, keep it in your pocket so it's I nice know and warm. I it was. It was warm last time, Angela. Oh, I'm promising you. Oh, actually, this I left this out too. <gasps> we left our lighters out. You know, I know you've seen there. us on the other episodes, but if this is your first time, once again, we're in a detached garage. It is cold and windy today. It's friggin' in the Hudson. Oh my gosh! So it, the cold actually does affect uh, the the lighters, believe it or not. You got to keep them in your pocket, nice and warm, so they start right up. Does it work for you? Oh, that's your yeah, using. Yeah, no. It, yeah, that's a nice this, lighter. My lighter was literally in my boot last time. <laughs> I'm in my boot. Stick and, it in um, your boot now, so it's all good. All right, it's so work. All right, so let's get this lit. I'm toasting the foot. Let's see. Do you, all right. We should have. We didn't do the uh, the cedar spill in there again. To uh, oh, we didn't. No, <laughs> I think we almost caught the detached crotch on fire last time. So maybe not. Fast all right. Time. All right. So we're lit here, and we gotta pour ourselves something. So what are we drinking? I'm gonna open this up. I just ordered this online. It, it came shipped right to my house from Blackened. I will put the link below. It is very cool. I was reading the the back of the bottle. I just I like the um, the verbiage. Oh yeah, let's tell us about it. Oh, Where do you even just wait? the back. Oh of yeah, the bottle here. It says um, yeah. No, you don't have your glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> That's my secret. Shh, sorry. Um. So, it's a bold... Ooh, nice smoke output. It is, yeah. Nice smoke output. A bold collaboration, or collab, for those of you who are cool, <laughs> of the finest hand-selected whiskeys. An unrivaled composition of craft and creativity, born in a cask, forged by sound. So... I just thought that was kind of neat. And then we did a bit of research. Yeah, look that up as I crack so, this open. 
We're going to pour. Now you're going to have what? One or two fingers you said here? One finger. Last time I over poured yeah. on it. Yeah. It's like, you know Ooh, There was that sound. Got to get that pop. Sound, right? Oh, isn't it? Let's hear it. <sighs> All right. So, blackened is a blend. Tell me when. Uh, okay. Well, that sounds too. That's good. Yeah, that's, right. we'll start with that. We're just going to wet our whistle here. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm going to wet the end of my cigar is what I'm going to do. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a blend of sourced bourbon and rye, aged for about eight years, and has been finished in black brandy casks to the low hertz frequencies of Metallica's music through black noise sonic enhancement process. Cool. Which is so cool. Yeah, they got the uh, the music on as they're essentially what this means. Yeah, is the whiskey is dumped into the charred Spanish brandy barrels, blasted with Metallica's chugging power chords and quick fire drum riffs to vibrate the liquid and increase interaction between the wood and the whiskey. I'm telling you, so folks, cool. This is some serious stuff. So we, I mean, we gotta get a shot of this here. Let's put. I'm gonna blackened. Let's get, put your cigar next to that. Hold on. I think we need to, uh, oh, gonna... we can listen to something. Yeah. But first, let's do a cheers since we did a pour oh, so I right. could sip this. There cheers. we go. Cheers to you. Get this going here. Mmm. Now, we've never That's tried this smooth. before. Mm. I give it an A+. Plus. Well done. Wow, and the the aroma on this cigar. Oh my gosh. Do you like it? Because you've never tried. I, I, when this first came out, I don't know when it was, a couple months ago. Uh, Drew Estate just put these out. I tried one. I had to I had to drive an hour uh, to to get it. There there weren't in any local lounges here. Um, and I did try it in the lounge, but I'm gonna say, and I, I think I've said this before. When you're in the lounge, there's you know the 30 other people smoking at the same time. So there's the other aromas. Yeah, they all mix and, and mingle. Yeah. So we're tasting this mm. now alone. Uh, with just the smell of the M81, and I'm digging this aroma. I like it. Because I, I like actually it haven't lot. smelled it standalone yet. Um, and it's important, I think, for cigar lovers out there to uh, really under like dive into like the, the note, the flavor notes, and this like yeah. the relaxation of it. So, uh, Blackened is actually a song uh, for all of you Metallica fans. We're yeah, let's pump do it, it through a little bit here. All right. This is definitely a heavier. Not that. Get to the. Are we at the chorus? The chorus. All right. Let me cap this up. I guess this is why. Uh, now, who? What's this guy's name? Dave. That makes this uh, whiskey. Dave. Remastered by. Yeah, Dave. Your your signature is a little difficult to read. <laughs> it's a doctor in a former life. <laughs> so, is this what he's blasting when he's? Putting it in the cast? I don't, I think it's probably all of Metallica, honestly. It's such a neat, yeah. neat process. It's a good vibe to have uh, a Metallica music <laughs> and a Metallica cigar at the same Absolutely. time. I mean, that's really, that's a vibe right there. No, that's. Ooh. Oh, you gotta get that silver a little. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. We'll play another Metallica song later. Yes. Let me take another sip of this and see. It's good. That's definitely nice. That is nice. So, what are we talking about today? Well, Metallica. So, yes. I, um, I've i never seen them in concert, have you? I've always wanted to. Um, I remember I when know. Master of Puppets came out. Yeah. And, um, that what was that? This is like an eight-minute song or something, <laughs> or even probably 12 minutes. And... Um, that that was quite something to like. That was quite an experience when that first came out. Yeah, I um, you know, I really got into the heavier music probably like mid ninety, early nineties, I would think. Um, so I was never like I I can list obviously their favorite, their their big hits. Yeah, um, I've ne I never on, owned um, any of their CDs. Any of their CDs, I don't think, but. I date back to cassette tape days. Oh yes, <laughs> actually the had Master, ma yeah, Master of Puppets uh, <laughs> single on on. Yep, I did. Um, um, but I, I had to switch over too. From I I was a um, one of my first cassettes <clears throat> I ever got was Run DMC. Ooh. And I'm a huge New Kids on the Block, and so that's kind of like right. And then you go from that to Metallica, right? But, but then I got you know. 
I mean, I think one of my first, I remember getting the cassette. I wanted it so bad for my birthday. My aunt and uncle got it for me. It was um, Lionel Richie dancing on the ceiling, <laughs> which is like the coolest video ever. <laughs> yeah, that was a big hit. Um, yeah, that and Whitney Houston. Oh, Whitney was the one of the first uh, vinyl albums oh, really? that I got for my birthday back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that was... That was a uh, cool cover, too. She was, like... Yeah. With the... <laughs> her hair. Yeah, that was... Those were the... T- R.I.P. <sighs> Whitney. I know. Mm. She was definitely one of my faves. I would have loved to have seen her live. Did you see her live? Whitney Houston, I did not. Um, but that would have been... That would have been pretty amazing. Um, one thing I love... Um, have you ever heard all of the different versions of um, Nothing Else Matters? Like no. From, there are people who will, like, symphonies oh, will play Oh, you know what? It. Yes, yes, yes. I love just I'm gonna, finding yes. other, um, you know, people play it on the cello or, you know, just different instruments. And it's just so, I just love it. I love the vibe of that song. They actually have, um, like, a kid's lullaby album. Stop. Uh, yeah, that they put out where they redid um, heavy songs like that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, like, with violin and stuff. And Metallica's one of them. But the thing is... As as a wedding DJ, I I first discovered that when um, not well Metallica by default, but the first uh, groom that ever said to me, "Oh, I'm a big Tool fan," and but like where will that fit in? Like you can't play you know <laughs> sober during dinner. But what it was is then I was like, yeah, yeah. So I was like, well, where are we gonna fit in Tool in your uh, wedding day? But then I discovered uh, the instrumental version. Um, and played it, uh, some, I don't even, it was probably during dinner, actually, not for their ceremony, but he did want something for That's the ceremony, but his, uh, his bride was like, mm. <laughs> but then, then I came across Metallica, the lullaby, uh, That's really, really cool. I'm gonna have to yeah, look that up. Yeah, it's funny that you say Imagine the different versions. falling asleep to Metallica. That's, yeah. That's something I'm into. But, um, I will say this, um, this, uh... This is burning very evenly. Yes. I mean, yep, I was just this is that. exactly what Drew Estate does. This is, uh, the construction of the cigar, I would say, is a 25 out of 25. I mean, uh, look at the leaves. Yeah. There's, they're not fraying. Nothing is coming yeah. undone here. Isn't that a Metallica song? Something undone. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we got for Metallica? Uh, let's play, um... Nothing else matters. You got that on? Oh, uh, absolutely. But yeah, Some this is burning favorites. nicely. Oh, you turned and off I, mine. Oh, did I? You did. And I like the, uh, I, I like when it's a nice, connected to clean Marcy, white ash like that. Too. I know. We were just saying that, um, in the, one of the, the San Giuseppe's that you were smoking. Very, very birch tree like, it reminds me of. It's pretty. Yeah. Oh, I can just listen to this over and over. I love this intro. Is this the song? Is this the intro you're talking about? You play on guitar? Is this one? No, this, this is nothing, nothing else matters. matters. No, oh, you were saying one. One, one. When I, um, one of my friends in high school, he was an incredible guitarist, and he taught me the intro to one on the electric guitar. Because uh, if anyone plays guitar out there, it, there's a different way to kind of like, uh, between an acoustic and an electric guitar. Okay. Um, you're the musician, I'm. Yeah, because the strings on the electric guitar are like thinner and oh, kind of easier to bend and um, yeah. All right, oh, this is a good vibe. Just chilling with a cigar and listening to him sing. Hey, James, we're smoking your cigar. <laughs> <laughs> that is just I, I love the story of, of the whiskey though being aged through music. Yeah, it's very cool. Born in cast. Forged by sound. All right, so before we play that next Metallica song, I just want to remind everyone this is your virtual cigar lounge. Um, If you're, you know, watching us uh, on your phone, maybe on your back deck, you're having a smoke along with us. That's great. This is a cigar community, and we all want to be cigar friends so definitely comment below if you're enjoying what you're enjoying as you're uh, smoking with us and we're just gonna have yeah. some light banter yeah. and talk about whatever we need to talk about some yeah. light fun tell us what you're smoking for sure oh yeah uh, uh, email at 
authenticallyangelapodcast at gmail.com and definitely tell us what you're smoking. I love it. So since we're drinking whiskey, they do have a um, whiskey in the jar, which I had never heard, but... We're going to play that. I do, and I liked the intro. I played it for uh, for a sec. Whiskey in the Jar by Metallica. Sometimes you just need this, like... Sometimes you just need to headbang. (laughs) Yeah, I tell you. Ah. Yeah, last time when we were playing some music, we were saying how uh, certain people like kind of talk, sing. Yes. But I feel like James Hetfield, he's got that like growl. He can growl, but he also can really carry a good, strong note. And he's sexy as hell. Oh. <laughs> hey. Oh. I have a wife, but I will say this. Man, he's sexy. sexy as I hell. mean, I can admit that for sure. He is sexy. And it's, <laughs> you know, there were some artists from the 80s who. You know, they all had the hair, right? I mean, that 80s hair in, of the um, the heavy metal artists were great. And as they aged and they they cut their hair... It worked for him. Oh, my I, God. I, I thought that so too, good. yeah. Which, for him, it worked. It worked. He, totally. he, al- he almost, like, got better with age. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, this whiskey, totally better with age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yes. sure. Yep. So this is Love whiskey it. in a jar. All right, well, here's I to like you, it. Metallica, M81. Yeah. Oh, this burns so pretty. It does. It's a nice It's a nice draw, That's too. It. The photographer in me, actually, during our a quick break, I, I had to snap some photos, so you can throw those up after. Yeah, I'll put them. I'll put them. It's sure. just so pretty. And I want to see it's how perfect. like long we can how get the I ash know. going. Yeah. <laughs> how big is your ash? <laughs> They do say like when you do a slow draw, it's a it's a e- best way to like get the ash to not fall to off. To fall off. Because I, I tend to um, smoke quick. Yes. And it, I, yeah, then we the ash. Yeah. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a long puller. Yeah. Which is probably see look at your ash is mm. holding up nicer than mine. So uh, all right, so we want to do um, let's do another Mad Lib. Oh, I love Mad Libs. Those are fun. Let's do them. I'll have to bring. Uh, I have a, an adult version of Mad Lib. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of fun. We pull those out when we do, like, game night and stuff. Yeah, bring those along next time. So if anyone uh, is a fan of The Office out there, we did this one last time, The Office Mad Lib. This, today we're going to do Kevin's Famous Chili. So uh, Marcy already wrote down uh, the answers without looking, of course. I didn't cheat. No, I swear. We don't cheat. Over They're here. too funny to, like, to cheat. Oh gosh, we're not, yeah, totally. So right. verb ending in s. Catches. Oh, and we're gonna. Um, these are gonna be like cigar related. Some kind of. Them, of yeah, them. yeah. I tried to throw some cigar ones in there. Is there's only well, so many cigar words. <laughs> there are cigar related, but the the ashtray catches the ash. So was that? Oh, <laughs> done. Love it. It's related. Right. Um, a silly word. Doink. Uh, how do I spell that? Doink. D O I N K. Oh, I, come on, Scooby. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Doink. Doink. Uh, noun. Box. Mm-hmm. Box cigar press. Cigar box. Oh, oh or box or, press. Or, or or bo- cigar, box. cigar box. Yep, yep, yep. Adjective. Smart. Mm-hmm. If you're smart, you will get yourself some of these. Oh yeah. Blackened. I don't want mine to go out. Noun. Uh, lighter. Okay. As in, my lighter sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I gotta keep this one warm. Um, verb. Inhale. Oh, I like it. Adjective. Handsome. Mm-hmm. Like Mr. Metallica. Yeah. You know, Lars is handsome, too. He is. And uh, my son plays drums. Uh, I play drums, but my son plays better than me, but... Lars is a kick-ass drummer. Yeah. Um, you know his story? I do not. He, I think, okay, this is, uh, I, I'm pretty sure this is the story. His father was like a pro tennis player, and they came, oh, I don't know what country. I, I want to say Denmark. I'm probably wrong. I'll put it below. So they came over, which is why he has that cool name. Oh. Yo, yo, uh, Lars or Ur- Ur- Ulrich. Um, so his father and him, they came over, um, or I don't know if Lars was born in America or not, but 
I know his dad is from a European country, but he was a pro tennis player. Okay. And he wanted his son to kind of follow in his footsteps. And I think uh, he quickly, you know, realized he wasn't going <laughs> to follow in his footsteps. But, uh, man, is he an incredible drummer. Yeah. And I think he's basically also self-taught. As Whoa. A I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm 99% sure he's self-taught. And, I mean, that guy, he, it's, it's one of those things where they say, like, practice makes perfect. You're enjoying that. I am. But what? Guess what? Perfect practice makes makes perfect, perfect practice practice makes perfect. I think so. But, You've said that. Yeah, said said that phrase before, like, and I'm like, wait, that doesn't. Yeah, because if you practice, let's say you practice your instrument for an hour a day, mm -hmm. you're gonna be really good. Right. But if you practice like Lars. 10 hours a day. Yeah. You know, like when he was, I'm sure when he was like 12 or whatever, 14, he played like all day. You gotta put in and the work. And that's, that's how you get into Metallica. Yeah. I mean, you don't just get into the biggest band in, in the world. <laughs> Basically, one they are one of the biggest bands in the world. Sure. Honestly. Um, I mean, his talent, he's got the double bass, he's got the two bass drums. I love the way he does like the double bass with his feet. I love that. He kicks ass. So anyway, all right. that's a good tangent to go on. Sure. Uh, Lars and his drums... Uh, verb. Play. Play. We're talking about playing the drums. Uh, type of food. Filet mignon. Oh, filet. Fillet. Fillet mignon. Fillet mignon. That's mignon. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're going to have to read my handwriting here. Type of container. Shoebox. <laughs> oh, no. Did I go out? I, I was thinking the same thing. I don't uh -oh. know. Uh-oh. Got to rewrite that. Shoebox. I'm going um, shoes. <laughs> Adjective. Fruity. Fruity. So how do I buy fruiting? <laughs> and verb ending in ing. Sleeping. Which I would like to do. <laughs> Might nap this afternoon. Sandman. Enter Sandman. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> There's another Metallica song about sleeping. Uh, type of food, plural. Burgers. Burgers. Yeah. I could use a burger. Uh, oh, did you know this was the chili one? Oh, that's that could, right. See how that, that's right. Uh, adjective. Mm. Sweet. That might actually fall in line there. Uh-oh. Noun. Whiskey. Of course. Black and whiskey. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying it. I'm going to start to giggle, giggle more in <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> it's going to hit me. <laughs> I'm doing more than sipping it. I'm almost gulping it. It's so good. <laughs> It is. It's, it's really good. smooth. It doesn't burn going down no, at it's, all. It is. It's smooth. It's nice and smooth. I like it. Um, last name, plural. Smiths. Mm -hmm. I went generic. Mm -hmm. Noun. Glass. Okay. All right. I'm going to start to read this, and then you will finish, because that's right. how we're doing it today. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Kevin's famous chili. Kevin loves to make his famous chili for everyone who catches at Dunder... Doink! <laughs> <laughs> I just hope he doesn't spill it on the box this year. Okay, that's pretty funny. He spilled <laughs> that it all over the floor when he walked in. Oh, man, that was... You know, they sell uh, <laughs> a, um, a Kevin's chili, I think, like, crock pot. Do they really? now? Yeah, I just oh saw that. God. Yeah, <laughs> or like a themed pot or something. Yeah, of course they'll market anything, right? That's good. Here's what he had to say about his smart recipe. Oh, that fits. At least once a lighter, I like to inhale in some of my Kevin's handsome chili. <laughs> the trick is to underplay the filet mignon. Okay. And you start right All there. Right, here we go. I'm gonna relight this. Everybody's going to get to know each other in the shoebox. <laughs> I'm fruity about this stuff. I'm up the night before sleeping. Garlic and dicing whole burgers. <laughs> Holy crap, that does fit. I toast my own sweet chilies. It's a whiskey passed down from Smith's for generation. It's probably the glass I do best. Gosh. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That was a short one. Bravo. Bravissimo. Bravo. This is fun. <laughs> yeah, libs are fun. We need to get, yeah, we definitely need longer ones. Yeah. Who is your favorite character from The Office? Uh, Jim. Yeah, it's gotta be Jim. And right? then I think Jim first, um, 
And then Michael. I, um... How about you? I like Phyllis a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Marcy, remember the, the one um, where... Uh, oh, shoot, how did it go when they were like, uh, warning, warning... And um, oh, they they there was a list. There was a list of the pros and the cons. Remember when like um, um, California? What was that guy's name? Something California was the was the boss. Oh. Robert Robert California yes, was coming in. Yes, yes. And there was like this compiled list that he did, and he put like a pros and cons. And and I guess Jim or someone over like they looked, they found it on his desk or something, or, or Dwight found it, and he was like, our names are on a list. What does this mean? And they stole the list. You remember that? I don't think I remember that one. Oh, uh, that... you know, I haven't seen. I because I didn't watch it when it first came mm-hmm. out. Um, my my older daughter was always a fan, and obviously she caught it. I think probably when you we were talking about in the reboot. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, "What is this?" You know, I'd watch a few episodes, and I mean, it was pretty funny. There were definitely some episodes where I can't stand Michael. Uh, he's, I'm like, seriously, like, he just gets under my skin. And I'm like, you're so freaking annoying. And I know that's how his character is yeah, supposed to yes, be. Yes, yes, yes. But sometimes I'm like, I can't even watch this one. It's just so out of the... No, you know, when it first, first came out, actually, he was... I, I had, He had to grow on me. I didn't like him either. Yeah. I didn't like that character either. I right. always just loved Jim from the start. Well, yeah, he's adorable. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just like Phyllis because she's... Um, she is very smart. Like, she's very, uh, I think she always has, like, something good to say, but then she can just be just so dumb, and I don't know. <laughs> I just I just love her. I just I just like her character and what she comes out with. And her and Stanley's um, banter, or relationship. Like, yeah, yeah, they're, they're back banter. and forth. Yeah, because they sit across from each other <laughs> at the desk. Yeah, it's, um, oh, yeah, she's great. I would definitely say put her as number three for sure because when, when in that episode – um, so they were like, okay, we're going to like, oh, they wanted to copy the list and put it back on Robert California's desk, right? Okay. So that he didn't know they ever took it. And so, um, they were like, we need, Kevin, Kevin was like, we need, we need, you know, we need a warning. Someone tell us. You know, so he goes, warning, warning. And then Phyllis in the episode, so it was the, it's the best. Thing. She goes back in her chair and like her legs, her legs go up and she falls on the floor and it was hysterical because like they were just like, she fell back. It was like the funniest thing. Oh, I just picked the heater. I um. Oh I, my gosh! I, no, I should put the clip of that below because <laughs> her legs were like woo. <laughs> and then Dwight was just like, Phyllis. Oh, it was hysterical. Uh- Hysterical. Um, I always, I just like the pranks. Yeah. I really, oh, yeah. I wish I, I've always been wanted to, like, prank somebody. My fear is getting pranked back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like an April Fool's or something. <laughs> yeah, but just, the episodes in which they just totally prank uh, is just fun. It's just a fun concept. I, You know what I never understood? Because I never saw it from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I could never understand why they were, like, like breaking the fourth wall. Oh I yes, talking, yes, yes. And I, I just couldn't get. I'm like, I don't understand. Now half of the funny is when there's a conversation happening, and you know Jim just looks at the camera. Mm-hmm. You know, he's just like, <laughs> yeah. That's actually because I think it was supposed to be like a reality show. Well, they, um, they did a doc. They were yeah, doing a, yeah. PBS was doing a documentary. Yeah. Um, why it took them nine years to film. <laughs> yeah, I know. If you kind of watched the last episode and the way they tied that together, it kind of, it fit, but it didn't actually. Right. But you have to roll with it. You because do. They, they you had do. to like. It, it was a great platform. <laughs> it certainly was a great platform. Uh, Did you ever watch the uh, Ricky Gervais, the English version? I saw, I saw a couple. I want to actually go through them. I think that's on Netflix too. Sure I, unless is, they, yeah. they pulled it, but um. Have you seen a bunch of them? I haven't. Oh, you've been, you ha- you, no. oh, you have to catch... You have to start that one from season one. Okay. I think it's still up on Netflix, but uh, it's hysterical. I'm sure. Yeah, they say Michael is supposed to be the character Ricky played yeah. in the English yeah. one. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it's it's great. It's great. because Yeah, I didn't like Michael at first either, because once you really understand what his character is supposed to be... Right. Um, not that he's dumb, but he's, like, naive... 
And innocently, he's like, yes. innocently. Yes. Um, like, the things he says. And they do say, like, if they ever put that show out, like, today as a new show, it would never, like, on NBC, it wouldn't fly. Probably <laughs> not. No. It's kind of harsh Probably sometimes. <laughs> yeah. It's hard, though, when you're watching these shows, because I know um, Mindy, um, was it Mindy Kaling? Or... Yeah, she was one of the writers. She was, and she was obviously, um, you know, she worked, she was customer service, right? Yeah. Uh, but I can't stand her character. I cannot. Oh, I thought it was hysterical. Stand her character. Oh, I thought she was hysterical. Yeah, she purposely oh, laid it on thick, too, with, like, like how she was into Ryan. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, uh, oh, my God, you can't stand it? I, I can't stand her, no. You know, it's funny, coming from Long Island, she, that character kind of reminded me of, like, <laughs> certain like uh i don't want i'm gonna alienate myself if i say like oyster bay girls should i not say that <laughs> what kind of town um i grew up in beth page but i that she just reminded me of some of the the people i knew yeah like growing up but i thought it was i thought it was hysterical uh -huh. But because she was very much into like oh i can't think of one of the lines but yeah why the hell can't i think of her name on the show um Oh, I can't think of it either. She was with Ryan. Yeah. Um. And then one time she dated like Dwight and, or no, 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 no. Um, um, from the warehouse. Oh, I can't think of it. Oh, come on. But anyway, she she was like, um, this is what whiskey and cigars will do to you, folks. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Daryl. Daryl. That was Thank another you. D name. I'm dating Daryl now. Yeah, but what he the was. What was her name? I'm I, I'm looking it up. And she wanted out. Uh, no, he wanted out of the relationship, and she just said something so, like, nonchalant, and then he was like, okay, peace yeah. out, like, this is over, don't ever call me again. Oh, I want to think of it without, um, looking it up. No, we, we, we can't do can't. it. I just um, keep saying Mandy, too. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I liked her in? Because I feel, I think, one of the reasons I don't like her is because I feel like she always plays the same character. In a lot of the shows that she's she's been in, because she was also in, um, she had her own show. Yeah, she did. Um, well, because she does kind of write similar characters to. Yeah. I mean, but that's her. That's her. But she was in Ocean's Eight. Eight. Oh, really? With um, Sandra Bullock, mm. and her character was completely different. And I actually enjoyed her um, in that. Okay, what the heck was her name? Kelly. Oh, Kelly. All right. Did so we hear this? Yeah, we we were talking about Metallica since we're smoking and drinking and throwing ash everywhere. Uh, but I love how people have redone their songs, and this is "Nothing Else Matters" by Chris Stapleton, who I love to death. And this is an interesting version. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Stapleton has a unique. Um, oh, I can't think of the right word. I don't no. want to. I don't want to say raspy. No, but he's got soul to his. Yes, voice, he but, does. Yeah. And, and I was, we were saying how um, uh, how growly, you know, J James uh, James's yeah. voice is. Yeah. So it's yeah. just. Ooh, I like it. Yes, yeah. Chris Stapleton is that smooth. And he's another one that can do like country mm -hmm. rock, um, and it, it works. Oh, this is it does. I this know. Is, this, you know what? You I you just pulled this up. I never even knew he redid this. Song. I didn't I'm either. Gonna, I, I gotta put this on my. I literally pit just um, playlist. Google nothing else matters on yeah. Spotify, and I mean, Godsmack. <gasps> Scott Bradley. Oh, who's that? Postmodern jukebox. Okay, so I gotta hear how this sounds. Alright, let's go to the next one. Who's this? So, Tia Simone is singing this. So, uh, Postmodern Jukebox, Scott Bradley takes types of these songs, and they're like these 20s vibes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, the Verve, the Verve were albums that were put out that were in yeah. the... Yeah. And this is, um, what's this again that you said? Well, Tia Simone is singing. Yes, yes. But it's through Scott Bradley. Scott, okay, yeah, yeah. Postmodern Jukebox. Oh, this is nice. I'm going to put this one on my fire pit playlist, too. Like 
I like the piano in it. Yes. I've seen um, them live, mm. and they have all different singers come in mm -hmm. and just sing their songs. Actually, um, Creep is one of my favorites. Oh, by um, Radiohead. Yes. Oh, I love Radiohead. Love Radiohead. That's a that's that's an emotional. Actually, that's oh, you want to talk tangent? Yeah. We were gonna we were gonna talk we're gonna talk about your cat. I know. But, oh, let me tell you something. Radi oh, forget it. And this this is. Yes. Oh, and you know what? Um, Can you? Oh my gosh, I love it. So I much. think that uh, Brandy Carlisle also does a, a Radiohead remake. Oh really? Um, but this is not. Well, let's play this because we. Oh, this is good. Oh yeah, you could sing. Let's, let's hear the Marcy no. version. <laughs> oh, Haley Reinhardt. That's right. I knew it was a Haley. Haley Reinhardt sings that version. Oh, so good. We'll Listen have to, to put the, whole the list thing. below. Yeah, these, yep. I love. Yeah, that's nice. When people remake, you know, and that actually also that reminds me of like Kygo. Is that that's that's that EDM uh, DJ guy when he? Oh, okay. Um, did the remake with Whitney and um, oh, there was like an '80s hit. I'm talking about remakes, that was a nice one. Oh, I can't think of it. I'll put it below. I know. We're famous um, for our tangents on this show. <laughs> that's, that reminds me of that one. Um, man, yeah, some of those okay. remakes, when they change the tempo, it's a, and especially like, just as a fan of music, period, because I feel like there's, there's certain people that, uh, actually, I have met some people that tell me, like, they don't, like, I say, who's your favorite artist? And they're like, I don't know. Yeah. And I'm like... Did you just say that? Yeah. <laughs> so it blows my mind personally because I'm just, I mean, literally since I've been in the womb uh, <laughs> into music, but um, I love when like tempos change. Yeah. And, and they, and they're a hit and you have a different, a different love of the song because it just puts you somewhere else. Yeah. You know, where you can completely bang out to Metallica's version, but then you can listen to this and you're in this, yeah. like, you're in a cigar lounge just mm -hmm. enjoying a different vibe but it's their songs you know so scott bradley postmodern jukebox which is great i love to do photo shoots mm. especially if i'm doing like a headshot shoot of someone who's looking to have a little bit of fun it's um varieties of music um like you're putting it on to in the a background different tempo yeah as you're... yep it's all songs that you know and you can sing to but the vibe is just chill and completely um unexpected so that's nice yeah look them up but yeah. uh higher love higher love by kygo k-y-g-o he right. he remade that Bring with, with, yeah love. but okay. he, he, he you know steve winwood yeah but yeah. he did the whitney version really yeah oh it's all right want to pull that one up let's see what i got here k-y-g-o okay higher love G -O. that one i think was one of the t a top 40 hit a couple years really? ago -E yeah, it's interesting. Like, even the biggest music fan you could be, and you're like higher love. Oh, here we go. Let's see here. Get to the mid. Get to like the middle of it. Oh, I shut you this keep off. Turning it off, dude. Sorry. Yeah. Reno, Marcy. 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 <laughs> do do do. <laughs> you know this? Song? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, this song. This isn't. This is different. I, maybe. But it's like a tempo change of the original. Yeah. But um, she's just the perfect pick for this, though. Oh, she just goes right there. Oh, I remember this now. Yeah. Back in, yeah. It was, yeah. It's been a few years. Yeah, this is a jam. But I don't want to, uh, we don't have the copyrights to any no, of these songs. We don't. So I don't kind of want to get in trouble. For We're just, all right. But yeah, that is a good one. That's a good one. We just went from Metallica to Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of were popular at the same time. Error. Honestly. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Um, which is so cool about music. Again, you could go from you know Barbra Streisand, New Kids on the Block to ah, I know, just rocking it out. Uh, Master puppets. Da, da, da. <laughs> it's the coolest thing. So we're in the last segment here. Uh, Thanks for sticking with us uh, today. And what what do you have going on? Oh, we were going to say what we were doing this week. That's right. What'd you have? Going I needed it. I was coming off a very long week um, with, the play. with the show. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we were talking about my cat having um, surgery. Oh, yeah. <sighs> so You were uh, busy. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah, now, when he or she, your cat, he, um, when he came home, did he have that cone thing? He didn't. My yeah. husband was really hoping he would. <laughs> That could be He's not good. a huge fan of the cat, so he was like, oh, I get to at least make fun of him wearing this, the cone of shame. But no, he had, um, he had, like, the worst case of gingivitis, Aww. like, the vet has ever seen. And oh, I didn't even guy. realize he was, she was like, He's, he must be in a lot of pain. Now, his breath stank. Oh, jeez. He was just a smelly cat. <laughs> But that was his gingivitis. Smelly cat. Smelly cat. Right back to music. Yeah. It's but, a, you got to stick a cigar in that cat's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Mask the smell. <laughs> he doesn't want to eat the food that I'm giving him. His mouth probably hurts. <sighs> we got four more weeks of him being in the house mm-hmm. before his stitches dissolve. Oh, yeah. Pray for me. <laughs> Please. Aw. <laughs> and the cat. You know, um, aw, poor guy. What's his name? Domino. Domino. He's a tuxedo. Not the song. Do- oh, oh, Domino. <laughs> or Fats Domino, the singer. But he, uh, yeah, that's my, uh, that's my story, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, growing up, we had um, an outdoor cat that, because um, like, we had a front porch that um, was kind of like... Um, I don't even know how to describe it. In a uh, three-season front porch. So the cat kind of would hang in there. but Because um, he didn't really always come in, fully in, in the house. Oh, this okay. This one cat that we had growing up. Okay. But my grandpa actually built him uh, a, like a dog house, but a cat house. Oh. With like sh- ro- real roofing shingles on it and everything. Right outside our back door. And the cat would go in it and chill. Like, it with this cat, like, it was... His name was Mitten. I, it was, I mean, today is very cold. Yesterday was beautiful. Mm. And because I know that he doesn't really... He just wants to go sit in the sun. So I went outside with him. And I was like, I'll just chill outside. If mm-hmm. I'm outside, he'll stick around. I'm telling you, I turned my eye for a second, and Boom. I couldn't find him. He found a mouse. Like, son <laughs> or something. Of a, you know, mm. we can't have him chewing on anything outside. Mm. That right, that might that right, might yeah, yeah, the stitches. The stitches. Up. So, oh, I, I think your uh, you think fell off. Did my oh my little scarf? Wait, hold on. Did it? Yeah, I think you washed the headpiece there. <laughs> so, I'm you know trying to find out where he is. I'm like, there's no way he could have like scampered. I was right there. Turns out he, he was like, I'm free. I know. He jumped up. We cover our patio table mm-hmm. in the winter so it doesn't get. And he had hopped up under and was just sleeping on the cushion Aww. under the, the table. So he was out for a little while last, yesterday. But. <sighs> yeah, they really, they get called to the wild. Yeah. And, and it's cool, too. Like an uh, outdoor cat, um, they get that thick winter fur, which when I was growing up, because we always had indoor cats. And then we just had that one outdoor cat um, mm-hmm. growing up, and I thought, wow, that's so cool how their fur like thickens does. in the winter. Yes. Yeah, because they really, I mean, that's serious uh, lioness out there. <laughs> I mean, they're, I feel like cats are closer to like their origin uh, species than almost a dog. I, I think so too. It's kind of wild the way they, yeah, uh, you know, just pounce outside. <laughs> And get this, get get whatever they, the birds and the mice. No, our poor, poor birds. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's Mother Nature. It is. It yeah. is. So um, I was just during our quick break, I was filling in my cigar journal, and where did this band go? Oh, that's a nice one. I, it really is. It's very. Cool. Are you gonna give it? What do we? The, what kind of star rating are you? Gonna oh, give I'm it? giving this one a five. Mm. I really. This is good. I liked how it burned. Mm-hmm. It was very, um, very even, um, and I feel it's got a bit of a kick to it, which mm-hmm. I like. It's a darker cigar too. Maduro, yeah. This yeah. is a Maduro. So um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this one a, a five starry. Yeah. I'm trying to kind of. What do you taste in it? What are you getting from um, it? From what's labeled here, I would definitely say the pepper, spice. Yes, yep. Um, I was going to say that as well. But there's a, there's a little bit on uh, sweet. There's a hint of the sweet. Mm-hmm. And it does pair well with this whiskey. It Oop, does. I just knocked my Oop. microphone. Sorry out there. Um, it does pair well. Um, like you said, this whiskey mm-hmm. um, is very smooth. It doesn't have, like, a burn. Um, no. So th- it does pair nicely because this is kind of like woodsy. Maybe this cigar, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, the aroma on it 
it's I, I like to use the word like a, like a charred like yeah. a charred smoke yeah like I've, I've said in some of my reviews like charred steak um, mm-hmm. that sizzle definitely a full uh, full yeah. bodied yeah it's nice nice but uh all right so thanks for joining us yeah and uh we put the marcy's gonna put her band in her cigar journal get yourselves a journal <laughs> anything else we want to add? good i think i'm good this was a i i personally like this episode <laughs> hope you're chilling oh we have to Enjoying. say we have to do our toast oh we our, have our to, new that i, oh, I get, i'm okay. determined to end every uh no you guys are going to have this memorized along out there with us. We have to end it with our toast. Oh, I, so get our I think we should do every other line. Why is that? Oh, you mean instead like... Instead of saying it together? together? Yeah. All right. All right. So I will You start, start us off. off. Okay. So here's to swearing, lying, stealing, and drinking. When you swear, swear by your country. When you lie, lie for a friend. When you steal, steal from a bad company. We should say this together. We should. And And when when you drink, drink drink with me. (laughs) Slunge of (laughs) All right, all. As we say, we'll see you next next time. time. Authentically and love video.